when you come across a species that you see is going to be extinct uh, in my lifetime, which <laughs> there's not a lot left, uh, I, I can't sit back and just watch it go. Down there, in the heartland of wildest Africa, there lies a story needing to be told. It's the story about the world's most endangered antelope, the Hirola, and the people who've come together not only to care for this creature, but try everything they can to ensure its long-term future. Our story takes us to the Ijara district in the northeastern province of Kenya, near the border with Somalia. Here in this remote part of the world, our weird hunter-gatherers and Somali pastoralists live out their lives. For centuries, the locals have been caring for the land and have regarded the Hirola as sacred. But numbers have plummeted from over 10,000 in the 1970s to fewer than 500 today. The threat of extinction prompted the three local communities of Katila, Korissa and Hara to form the Ishakbini Hirola Conservancy, situated along the eastern bank of the beautiful Tana River. Here, the 72 square kilometer reserve serves as a core refuge for the Hirola and many other animals. That is, uh, I'm almost 35 years old. That is early, early 80s. I used to see a large number of errors. After every year, the number is coming down from year to year. A Hirola, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, there were 10 to 15,000 Hirola. They were thriving. They've declined over that sh very short period of time, probably because of disease to a small extent poaching. None of us can put our finger on the exact reason, but those are the two key issues that we feel uh, led this to, uh, decline. We've had a very careful study on the collecting scat uh, droppings from all the predators around here. We found that Herola was the predominant animal that was being killed. The recruitment of all the foals was very low. So just having stopped the poaching, having got a handle a bit of a handle on the disease issues in that we're monitoring the population now very, very closely. We came to the conclusion that predation was the main reason that was, that was taking these animals now to extinction. With 250 animals left, uh, with abundant wild dog, leopard, lion, hyena, they just couldn't hold their own against, against that. So in consultation really uh, with a lot of experts in this field, Based on our experience with black rhino, uh, with giant sable in southern Africa, we decided that fencing off a specific area, catching these animals, putting them into the predator-proof area, taking all the predators out, is going to remove what we see now as the last big challenge to them, and to give them an opportunity to breed, uh, you know, without the predation challenge. With the help of the Kenyan Wildlife Service and the Northern Rangelands Trust, funding and much needed expertise has been directed towards this groundbreaking project and the local communities are benefiting through new employment opportunities and skills training. Madam, here we are uh, doing the cut line. These are fence for the, for, for, for the Herola Century. We have employed over 100 community members who are all from I hadn't worked with the Somalis before and what I found with them is that they're, they're much more pragmatic, they're precise, they're very loud, everything is is very, uh, you know, you think you're about to be hit over the head and the next thing there's, there's a solution. But once there is a solution it's fun and, and, and they really have an intense pride in Hirola and in what they're doing there and I sense it more and more. In, in, in the time that I worked down, down here. The beauty about this model of community-driven conservation is that it is a win-win situation. We get to save the wildlife and at the same time empower and uplift the people. 
The hope is that one day, when the civil unrest of Somalia ceases to be a threat to visitors, a potential for wildlife and cultural tourism to Ishakbin may further aid in positively developing this colorful and peaceful Islamic society. You know, this has to evolve. We can't be too prescriptive. We're trying something very new. It's quite daring. There's lots of risk. Uh, and, and my hope would be that we'll successfully be breeding Hirola over the next five years. In five to seven years, we'll have a surplus within the sanctuary. And then we'll look at one of two things, either taking them out of the sanctuary and releasing them outside and letting them just percolate away from, from the core sanctuary, or starting satellite sanctuaries elsewhere within the district and try and build up other, other core populations. It needs to evolve.